The sun is responsible for life on earth, but too much of its UV radiation exposure damages the DNA of plants and animals. Around 600 million years ago, a protective layer was formed around the earth to protect living beings from the harmful rays of the sun. This layer was responsible for multicellular organisms finally arriving on land and forming a new world. But in 1982, Joseph Farman, a researcher at BAS, noticed something dangerous happening to the ozone layer that was compromising our safety. Every October, a hole appears in the ozone layer over the South Pole. <laughs> hole in the ozone shield is the size of the continental United States. The protective ozone layer is being threatened as never before. We're all at risk. Joseph Farman, a researcher at BAS, had been studying the atmosphere in Antarctica since 1957. In 1982, his ozone reading showed a dramatic dip around 40%. Rather than being alarmed, he was doubtful of the data and thought the machine that measured ozone layer might have malfunctioned. The machine was difficult to keep working in the severe Antarctic cold, and this particular instrument was old. Besides, he reasoned NASA scientists had satellites collecting atmospheric data from all over the world, and they hadn't reported any problems regarding ozone depletion. The next year, Farman still found a drastic decline. He dug up his old data and found that the decline had really started back in 1977. Now, Farman suspected that something odd was happening strictly over Halley Bay, leaving other areas unaffected. So the next year, his team took measurements from a location 1000 miles northwest of Halley Bay. Even there, a large decline in the ozone occurred. Farman published the findings questioning why NASA's satellites didn't detect it. NASA had the data but overlooked it due to a filtering program. Farman's group analyzed the same data differently, revealing a massive ozone hole in Antarctica more severe than expected, exposing our planet to increased solar radiation. Now, to understand this situation properly, we need to understand what is ozone layer. The ozone layer is made up of a gas itself called as ozone gas. It is a layer that is present 15 to 35 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The Earth's atmosphere contains a total of about 3 billion metric tons of ozone gas. Despite the large total mass, ozone is a very small fraction of the entire atmosphere. It's only about 0.00006%, which means if you imagine the whole atmosphere as a pie, the slice that represents ozone is an incredibly thin line. Out of 3 billion metric tons of ozone gas, 90% of it is present in the ozone layer itself. The highest concentration of ozone is found about 32 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Now, the ozone is actually made up of oxygen molecules. This formation happens when the ultraviolet rays of sun impact on oxygen molecules. A very simple chemical reaction takes place. You might have learned that a single oxygen molecule has two oxygen atoms. Due to ultraviolet radiation, these two oxygen atoms split apart and these individual atoms impact on other oxygen molecules, forming a new molecule called as ozone. The chemical equation here is O plus O2 is equal to O3. Hence, the chemical formula of the ozone is O3. If you see a new oxygen atom impacts on O3, that is ozone, again it breaks down into two oxygen molecules. The chemical equation here is O plus O3 is equal to O2 plus O2. This cycle of constant formation and removal of oxygen atoms is called as Chapman cycle. This loosening up of atoms and reforming of them is a natural phenomenon, unless human interference is happening in it. The ozone layer is responsible to protect us from the harmful radiation of sun called as ultraviolet rays. The sun produces three harmful rays, UV rays that is ultraviolet rays, X-rays and gamma rays. These three rays are extremely harmful for us in the long run. Now there are three more categories in ultraviolet rays. UVA, UVB and UVC. UVC is the most harmful one and our ozone layer protects us from gamma rays, X-rays and UVC radiation. But what about the UVA and UVB rays? Well, for that, sunscreens protect us from these remaining harmful rays which passes through our ozone layer. 
but many sunscreens do not protect us from both the UVA and UVB rays hence it is essential to buy a broad spectrum sunscreen anyways coming back to the main point our ozone layer protects us from the gamma rays x rays and uvc radiation now you may say shaz why ozone layer is so important what if it completely depletes well my friend in that case skin cancer rates would go through the roof plants like rice wheat and corn would be less effective and more likely to get diseases because photosynthesis would not work as well even the non vegetarian food will be affected due to uv radiation x rays and gamma rays the amount of food grown around the world would drop dramatically and whole ecosystems would break down people will suffer and eventually die yes this is how important the 0.00006% of the atmosphere that is the ozone layer for our survival in the early 1970s two scientists named mario molina and sherwood roland discovered something troubling about a group of chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons or cfcs these chemicals initially created in the 1920s for use in refrigerators were popular because they were safe and effective they were non flammable non toxic and had various uses beyond refrigeration However Molina and Roland found that when CFCs reached the stratosphere they broke down due to UV light releasing chlorine atoms these chlorine atoms then attacked and destroyed ozone molecules causing a potential threat to the earth's protective layer called as ozone layer Despite their scientific findings the companies producing CFCs resisted the idea you know just for their own profit initially it was estimated that CFCs could reduce ozone concentrations by 7% within 60 years but by 1985 it became evident that ozone depletion particularly over antarctica was happening much faster than anticipated scientists in antarctica noticed a significant drop in overhead ozone every spring nasa released visualizations and data confirming the link between cfcs and ozone depletion capturing global attention These US movies started showcasing awareness. Those damn fluorocarbons have been kicking hell out of the ozone. <laughs> Macaroni, it'll burn off. <laughs> well, so will the ozone eventually. The threat of increased skin cancer due to reduced ozone levels loomed. But some politicians hesitated to take immediate action, prioritizing short-term economic concerns. Surprisingly, the push to ban CFCs found support from unlikely allies: U.S. President Ronald Reagan and U.K. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Despite their general opposition to government regulation, both leaders, influenced by Reagan's personal experience with skin cancer treatment and Thatcher's background in chemistry, recognized the urgency of the situation. The United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Norway, Sweden and Finland led efforts to secure an international ban on CFCs. In 1987, representatives from around the world signed the Montreal Protocol, committing to rapidly phase out CFCs. Remarkably, every country on earth eventually confirmed this treaty, making it a historic achievement. This was the first time in history that all countries agreed upon something. In 1995, Molina, Roland and their Dutch colleague Paul Krizen received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their groundbreaking work. As the use of CFCs declined globally, the ozone hole began to shrink. Today, the ozone depleting gases have almost disappeared. Scientists predict that it will completely disappear by 2070. marking a significant success story in addressing a major environmental threat however the victory against cfcs doesn't mean the environmental challenges are over the replacement of cfcs hydrofluorocarbons that is hfcs brought a new set of problems while they were not as harmful as cfcs hfcs turned out to be potent greenhouse gases contributing significantly to climate change Despite being less harmful than their predecessors, HFCs still trap more heat than carbon dioxide, worsening the global warming issue. In response to this concern, the Kigali Amendment was introduced in 2016, becoming an addition to the Montreal Protocol. This amendment aimed at reducing global HFC levels by 85% by the year 2047. If successful this reduction alone could prevent up to 0.5 degrees celsius of global warming by the end of the century 
to put that into perspective even a 0.5 degree celsius of temperature change may influence the rate of ice melting in polar regions contributing to sea level rise this can have serious consequences for low lying coastal areas leading to increased flooding and the potential displacement of communities this 0.5 degree celsius change on a global level may seem small but it can cause a huge number of problems in the long run As we confront the urgent threat of climate change today, the Montreal Protocol stands as a shining example of how the world can come together to address environmental issues. It demonstrates the necessity of global cooperation and decisive actions to combat the challenges posed by human activities on the planet. Lastly, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And like the video and subscribe is those for content that makes you smarter.